Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your children. We thank you for these beautiful boys and girls that we know you have planted a seed of success in their lives. We are praying, Lord, the seed will grow. Nothing will stop them. As we look at your word together again, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, This time we're talking about passing the test of purity. If anyone is going to pass on to progress, to promotion, and to prosperity, there is a test that will first come to him. And it is a test of purity. And it is as you pass that test of purity, then you will be able to have a taste of position, a taste of prosperity, a taste of provision, a taste of progress, a taste of promotion, a taste of success. And we're looking at a young man. A teenager like yourself. The first time we meet him in the Bible, he was still a teenager. And he passed the test of purity. And then he could have a taste of all the good, good things the Lord had for him. Passing the test of purity. In First Timothy chapter 5, Verse 22. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Joseph is the one we're talking about, and it's a good illustration for every one of us. All of us young people need to learn a lot from Joseph. Joseph was taught, trained, and tested. He was taught by his father. He was trained by God. He was tested by life. Life tested him. Joseph went through the test of life in the school of life. And as we look at the life of Joseph, before he came to the throne, and before he received the success, I see three sessions or three periods in the school of life. Number one, in the home of the parents. Number two, in the house of Potiphar. Number three, in the habitation of of the prison. Three sessions in Joseph's school of life where he was taught, trained, tested. In the home of the parents, he had a taste of pro prominence. It was very prominent. A taste of prominence. In the house of Potiphar, he had a taste of prosperity. In the prison, he had a taste of persecution. And as we look at Joseph, in all those three sessions, for the parents, for Potiphar, in the prison, you will see that he passed through test. In the home of the parents, there was a test of pride. Will he be proud? With all the privileges he had, will he be proud? With all the prominence the Father had given him, will he be proud? With the great dream that he had, there was a test of pride. He passed the test. And when he had passed the test, normally when you take a session, and then you go through the test and you make it and you pass. Then you go to the next session. And so when he passed, 
in the home of the parents, he was transferred. He was promoted. He was led on to the house of Potiphar. And in that house of Potiphar, he had the test of purity. He was tested again. Every stage of life, every session is schooling, every term, every semester, there will be a test. And if you pass that test, then you move on. The test of purity. Again, Joseph passed the test. He never failed any test. And he kept on moving on after passing the test. There was still another session to go. Another stage to go through. Another level to reach. He had a taste of prominence, a taste of prosperity. Now, a taste of persecution. And he was in the prison. And here came another test. The test of patience. He had been promised by the person he interpreted dream for. When he told him, remember me. As we're going back now, released. Of course, he expected he would remember him. And eventually he got free. And he didn't remember him. Again, he had a test. The test of patience. He never grumbled. He never complained. He was not in a hurry. He settled his case. In the hand of the Almighty God, again he passed the test of patience. And it was after he had passed the test, the Lord now brought him in contact with Pharaoh. And then the test of promotion. And in the test of promotion, here we find him that his dream became fulfilled. The dream the Lord has given every one of us, spiritually, academically, professionally, they will be fulfilled. Yet, as we're in the process of going to the fulfillment of that dream, there will be a test, and we will pass the test. Living a day at a time, relying on the grace of God, you will pass the test in Jesus' name. The particular test we're considering today is the test of purity. Passing the test of purity. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the persistence of the tempter. The persistence of the tempter. That is, the tempter bringing the temptation, bringing the test, saying it every day, saying it continually, saying it frequently, putting the pressure on you, often, frequently, saying, do it. And you passing the test every day, saying, no. I have said yes to God. I say no to the tempter. But the tempter will persist. Number two, power over temptation. What gave Joseph the power to overcome the temptation? That's what we'll be looking at in point number two. Power over temptation. Number three, purity after transformation. Purity after transformation. We're looking at the first part. The persistence of the tempter. In Genesis chapter 39, Genesis chapter 39, verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me. Verse 10. And it came to pass. As she spake to Joseph day by day. He will not give up. 
He kept on saying it. He kept on demanding it. He kept on inviting him to sin. He kept on emphasizing the same thing. He kept on enticing him. He kept on demanding that Joseph will lose his purity and come into impurity. It came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. Joseph passed the test even though this temptress kept on repeating the same thing, demanding the same thing, asking for the same thing, putting pressure. And that's what tempters and temptresses do. They keep putting pressure. They keep demanding that you go into evil. They never give up. They're persistent. And you ought to make up your mind that if the messengers of Satan are so persistent in wanting to pull you down, you too will be persistent in saying no. She comes again. And then Joseph said, I said no. And I'm still saying no. And the following day, he, she came again. And Joseph said, I said no. And I'm still saying no. When you say no for the first time, you keep on saying no. If Satan is persistent, if sinners are persistent, if tempters are persistent, if temptresses are persistent, if the people that want to pull you down, if they are persistent, then you will have backbone, spine in your backbone. And you will stand straight and look them in the face and remind them, I am not a person that will say no the first time and say yes the second time. I said no. And I'm still saying no. That's what helped Joseph. In Judges chapter 16, reading from verse 6, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great power lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green weeds that were never dried, then I shall be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green weeds which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the wheels as a thread of tar is broken. When it touches the fire, so his strength was not known. And Elijah said to Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me. You see the persistence of Delilah keep on saying the same thing and told me lies now tell me i pray thee wherewith thou mightest be bound and he said unto her if they bind me fast with new robes that never were occupied then i shall be weak and be as another man delilah therefore took new robes and bound him therewith and said unto him the Philistines be upon this unseen. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. And he break them from off his arms like a stretch. 
And Delilah said unto Samson, He that Joe thou hast mocked me, and told me lies, tell me wherewith the might has be bound. You see, tempters and temptresses, they never give up. That's why you too, you should never give up. Don't allow a child of the devil to be stronger than you are. Don't allow enemies of progress to be stronger than you are. If they are persistent, you too should have the courage of character to be persistent. If people that don't have the grace of God, if they are persistent, you having the grace of God must be persistent. A sinner doesn't have the grace of God. A sinner doesn't have the Holy Spirit. A sinner doesn't have the power of God. If those who do not have the power of God, the grace of God, the strength coming from heaven, if they do not have the power of God, and not their only flesh and blood, if those people that are only flesh and blood, shallow, empty, not having the eternal and almighty hand underneath them, if they are strong and they are persistent, you having the grace of God, you having the power of God, and you having the strength of the Holy Ghost within you, you must be persistent. You see Delilah here, she came again, verse 13. She said unto Samson, Hitherto, as thou mocked me and told me lies, tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, then and she fastened each with the pin. And said unto him, The Philistines upon thee, Samson. And he walked out of his, he waked out of his sleep, and went away with the pin and the beam, with the web. And she said, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. You see how persistent the sinner, the temptress, the messenger of Satan, and the servant of the Philistines. You see how persistent she was. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily. Persistence. Tempters are persistent. Temptresses are persistent. The people that want to tempt you and lure you and draw you and drag you into sin and pull you down and cancel your dream and make you to forget that God has destined you to the throne. Those people are very persistent. She pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart something got to a breaking point a breaking point you see there are people that get to that breaking point a tempter comes to you and he says give me your body no. Okay, I'll give you a hundred naira. No. She comes, he comes again. Give me your body. No. Okay, not hundred naira. I'll give you two hundred naira. No. What is your price at which you can be bought? How cheap are you? The fellow comes again and says, I come for what I told you before. Give me your body. No. Okay, I'll give you 500 naira. No. What price are you waiting for that you will crumble? That you will collapse? That you will surrender? That you will yield? How cheap are you? He comes again. All right, give me your body. I'll give you 1,000 naira. Okay, 
Okay. If it's 1,000 naira, all right. That's your price. That's how cheap you are. You get to a point where you break down. That happened to something. Persistence. They were persistent. And tempters will be persistent. And if you yield, they are stronger than you are. Children of Satan, stronger than you are. Flesh and blood, stronger than you are. Empty people that do not have the Spirit of God in them, stronger than you are. Never do well. All these people that are not doing well at school, all they know is to invite somebody to come and commit sin, stronger than you are. And when somebody is shallow, is stronger than you are, how strong are you? When somebody that is ordinary flesh and blood, not having grace, not having faith, not having the Spirit of God, is stronger than you are, how strong are you? When somebody that doesn't have salvation, is stronger than you are, how strong are you? That means you're weak. You're weaker than a sinner. But no, you will be strong. I said you will be strong. And you will tell them, I said no before, and I am still saying no. In Proverbs chapter 7, Proverbs chapter 7, from verse 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. You see those temptress, temptresses or tempters, fear speech, much fear speech. Then they make them to crumble. Temptations come in various ways. I've been looking at the temptation of Joseph and the temptations of Samson and the temptations of many others. How do what temptations actually come to us as young people? I want you to do some writing now. Are you ready? You have paper? What are the you have pens to write? Pens up. Ah, God bless you. Great, good children. You will succeed. You'll be putting these things down. Temptation to associate with evil people. Associate, associate. The temptation to associate. You see, we feel lonely many times. And then the people who want to lure us into sin, they play a particular game. We call it isolation game. The game of isolation. And they meet together. And they say, I've asked her to, you know, give me her body and she doesn't want to. I've asked, we have asked her to contribute for the, to the exam malpractice and he doesn't want to. Okay, let us make her feel lonely. And they play the game on you. The game of isolation. And you want to sit somewhere. When you sit down, the person will stand up. And you want to say, please, uh, I need this. They turn away. Good morning, they don't answer you. They isolate you. What A does to you, B does to you, C does to you, D does to you, everybody does to you. You feel isolated. They want you to feel hungry for their association. So that you will beg them and say, all right, is it because of that thing? Okay, if it's because of that thing, it's all right now. That's temptation. The temptation to associate with evil people. B, the temptation to buy question papers, the temptation to bribe the teachers, the temptation to bribe the invigilators, temptation, the temptation to buy the question papers, and to bribe the teachers, invigilators, see, there will be the temptation to cheat in the exam, Tem temptation to cheat in the exam, it's a great temptation, and it has a pull a magnetic pull on people to drag them down. D is the temptation to defile your body. The temptation to defile others. And then the temptation to drink. Drink alcohol. F, the temptation to fight. The temptation to fight. 
and the temptation to commit fornication. E, the temptation to envy evil people. That girl is always going to the teacher. And is spending so much time in the office of the teacher. And uh, when the teacher comes to the class, they'll be calling her by her first name. And if we line up, and she is not, she just come in, they'll say, okay, come, come. And then forget the rest of us. And then in your heart, there'll be the temptation to envy those students that are evil. Don't envy them. Because they're digging their own grave. The temptation to envy evil doers. G, the temptation to go to places of sin. There'll be the temptation to go for the people. How are you spending your weekend this time? Well, I'm going to stay at home and, uh, and study. Ah, bookworm. You are the encyclopedia of, uh, the, of the school. Okay, go and study. We are going to enjoy life. And they make you feel miserable. As if there is something wrong with you. As if you are not normal. As if you are abnormal. And there will be the temptation to rise up, abandon your studies, abandon your books, and go to places of sin. H, the temptation to hate. You know when those other young people, students, when they call you bad names, there will be the temptation to hate them. And when they hinder you, there will be the temptation to hate them. Great temptation. And I, the temptation to be immoral immoral immorality and it tell you that you know are you not complete ah you're not a normal girl you're not a normal girl if you were a normal girl we would know and they make you feel as if you're not really complete and they say you're going to be sick anybody get into your age and doesn't try himself out doesn't try herself out will be sick and then they'll, they'll tell you that to pull you into immorality. The temptation to be immoral. J, the temptation to joke and jest or sin. And you know some of those uh, young people, they'll take a passage of scripture and they'll think that they are being lively and they'll be joking and jesting with them. And there'll be the temptation for you to be alive and to be like a clown. And to be like a jester, making everybody laugh. And then when they say naughty things, foolish things, they, they want you to laugh. Everybody is laughing. Why are you not laughing? The temptation to jest and to joke was seen. Okay? The temptation to kill, to murder, to commit abortion. The temptation to kill. L, the temptation to lie. And the temptation to deceive others. M. The temptation to murmur. Grumbling about. Complaining about. Murmuring about everything. The temptation to mock. To mock your teacher. Because that's what the other students are doing. The teacher maybe has a particular physical deformity. The temptation to mock him. If he's limping. Then when he's coming to the class... Uh, you, the temptation will be to stand up and walk in front of the class and be limping like him to make him conscious of his deformity. Or if he pronounces a word a particular way that you know maybe he has a uh, speech impediment, therefore he's not able to pronounce either uh, uh, something very well. The temptation will be to mock him. And then when he asks a question, you raise up your hand, and really you can pronounce that letter very well. That's not your problem. But you mock him. The temptation to mock your teacher. And the temptation to mock the people that are helping you. And the temptation to be mischievous. Just destructive. Practicing mischief. And the temptation to be naughty. So that all the people in the class are saying, that's right. You've shown the teacher again. Go ahead. And then they will whistle. And then that gets into your head and you continue to be naughty. But you know when you do that, yielding to that kind of temptation, you'll be kind of digging your own grave and you are burying your own success. 
how happy will that teacher be with you when you are not here? How will he want to sacrifice more of his time and give you extra hours and pay particular attention to you to help you to progress when you are not here towards him? When he feels inconvenient in your presence, that teacher comes to the class and he wants to teach, he wants to help, he wants you to get up, he wants you to have distinction. And then you're always yielding to the temptation to be naughty and you don't have to be. And that teacher just hurries up and finishes every, everything he wants to do. He's feeling ashamed in the presence of the students. He's feeling fearful and timid. He's frightened by the naughtiness of the students. And he runs away. I see going to give you extra time so as to help you. Are you not hurting yourself? Are you not destroying your own chances? You are not hurting him. He's a teacher already. He's got his degree already. He's made it in life already. He has come to your class. He has come to your school to help you. And when you do things that will not encourage him, he runs away. He's afraid for his life. He doesn't know what the students are planning against him. It's a temptation amongst students to be naughty. Oh, the temptation to oppress, to oppress the juniors, the ones that are younger than you are, weaker than you are, B, the temptation to please men and offend God, the temptation to please men and offend God, Q, the temptation to quarrel and keep malice. You see some young people, one said little thing happens that they should overlook. They have the temptation to quarrel and to keep malice. Are the temptation to rebel against your parents. I'm no more in the primary school. I'm now as tall, as big as mommy. I'm now as tall, as big as daddy. And so daddy and mommy should leave me alone. Stop controlling my life. I will do what I want to do. And even when we know daddy and mommy are saying the right thing, just to show them that we're no more babies, we're no more primary school children, deliberately we rebel. But that's a great temptation. The temptation to rebel against our parents. And then when we get to school, the temptation to raise riots. And to show the school authorities, we will not have this. And then you just, I'll be the ringleader. And then we say, we mention the name of the teacher. He must go. He must go. No classes today. And when you shout like that and there is, you know, riot, and then we start burning things, then even the school authorities will begin to look for shelter. What a great temptation. The temptation to riot. Then S, the temptation to be stubborn. T, the temptation to tempt other people. You, the temptation to use your members, the members of your body, or to use your gifts and your talents as instruments of sin. The temptation to use the good, good things God has given you for a bad, evil, destructive purpose. V, the temptation to victimize others. Especially when you have position in the school. And now with your position, you remember how you were victimized when you were in junior secondary. You remember how you were victimized when you didn't have any position, any power, any authority in the school. And you remember how you were victimized in the community when your parents just patched into that community. And now you have been long there, you have experience, you know the top boys and the top guys there. And the temptation will come to you. To victimize other people. W, the temptation to worship idols. You're looking for success. You're looking for healing. You're looking for prosperity. You're looking for money even before you pass out from school. And then the temptation to go and sacrifice. The temptation to go and to go into traditional medicine. The temptation to worship idols. Why? 
the temptation to yield to peer pressure. Yielding to peer pressure. It's a great temptation. Because schoolmates in your school and classmates too, they want to put pressure on you. Yield. Why are you so strong? Yield. Fall. Why are you standing? The temptation to yield to peer pressure. And then search the temptation to be zealous in doing evil. The temptation to be zealous in doing evil. But Joseph that we have studied about, he overcame, we are going to overcome. I said you are going to overcome. And remember you said no to the devil before. And you still keep on saying no. I come to point number two. Power over temptation. Let's go back to Joseph again. His story is in Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. We're looking at verses 8 and 9. Genesis chapter 39 verse 8. But he refused. Everybody say that with me. But he refused. Say that again. But he refused. That's the secret of victory. You'll be victorious in Jesus' name. Remember, remember the name by which we are called. We are the victorious youths of this generation. Now, if we are the victorious youths, if all these tempters, if they are stronger than us, and a little push will fall down. Where is our victory? A little uh, kind of uh, invitation, solicitation to evil. Then we crumble and we collapse. How are we the victorious youth? And a little kind of influence from them. And we're on the ground already. Where is our name? Where is our title? We're victorious. I said we're victorious. And we say no to sin. And we say no to Satan. And we say no to society that is telling us to do evil because we refuse to listen to them. Say it with me again. But he refused. Look at that verse 8 now. Let me just read now. Don't say it anymore. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not, waters not, what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back any sin from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? And sin against God. He had the victory. We will have the victory. I said we will have the victory. Let the people hear. We will have the victory. How do we have the victory? I, I, I don't know whether you have heard me say this before. I think you have heard. Empty bags cannot stand upright. If you hold a bag and you don't fill it up with either rice or beans or grain, it cannot stand upright if you leave it alone. And because empty bags cannot stand upright, if you are empty and you don't have Christ within you, you cannot stand upright. Your bag will collapse. Your bag will crumble. And get to the ground. But it is when you have something within. That's what will make you stand. How did Joseph and many, many others, how did they stand? Number one, they had conversion through Christ. Conversion through Christ. When you are being converted, number one, you know that you are a sinner. All have seen and come short of the glory of God. And the sinner is empty of the grace of God. Number two, you know that Christ died on the cross of Calvary to save you. 
Number three, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so you can be saved. Number four, now the compassion takes place and you confess with your mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead and that he gives you salvation and righteousness. Conversion. You're turned around. There's transformation. Conversion through Christ. Number two, covenant with Christ. As you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you close your eyes, you picture it as if the Lord is holding your hand and you are holding the hands of Jesus. And say, Lord Jesus, I make a covenant with you. I'll be true to you. I'll be faithful to you. I'll be loyal to you. And then Jesus also makes covenant with you. I'll give you my grace. I love you. I will never fail you. I will never disappoint you. I will never leave you. I'll be faithful to you. You'll be faithful to me. You make a covenant with Christ. And that covenant with Christ is sealed not by your blood, but by the blood of Jesus. Covenant with Christ. Number three. Commitment to Christ. So, if a tempter then comes and he says, Can you do this? No, that's against my covenant with Christ. And I'll be faithful to my covenant with Christ. Christ is with me all the time. And because Christ is with me all the time, and I made a covenant with him, I will not go back on my covenant. You are committed to Christ. Will you give me your heart? No, I've given it to Jesus. And I cannot share my heart with Christ and with you. Will you cheat? I promise the Lord I will follow him. I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Don't know one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Don't all oppose me. Still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. I've made a covenant with Jesus. I am committed to that covenant. And that's what helps people to overcome temptation. Number four, communion with Christ. Communion with Christ. We need His grace. We need His grace. That's why we're communing with Him. We're talking to Him. We're asking Him. In Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Our master, our mentor, our mediator is passed through it all. And because he overcame, we too will overcome. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in the time of need communion with christ he loves you and he's making intercession for you he's praying for you and when you pray to the lord in his name you commune with him is going to grant you the victory number five companionship in christ not just companionship with Christ, but companionship in Christ. And that divides into two parts. Number one is companionship with Christ. Number two is companionship with Christians. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it will be given unto you. Communion and companionship with Christ and in Christ. John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Number 6. Confidence in Christ. That's what gives us the victory. Confidence in Christ. You know that the Lord Jesus, He will hold your hand. I said He will hold your hand. You will not fall. You will not fall. Those tempters, they are not stronger than Jesus. 
They are not stronger than the Spirit of God in you. And they cannot be stronger than who you are. Greater you see that is in you than he that is in the world you have overcome already. Give me a good amen. In Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He is able, and he will keep you, keep you from falling. Because we're told he has kept other people before, and he promises you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Say, he will never leave me, nor forsake me. Say that again. Say it with confidence. That's why it says in verse so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. They cannot hurt you, they cannot harm you. The Lord will protect you. In John, first John, first John chapter 4 verse 4 first john chapter 4 verse 4 ye of god little children and have overcome them where are the overcomers praise god you have overcome and you will keep on overcoming amen let me ask you a question if somebody told you that look at this uh, person here that that student is always having distinction and then in the secondary school distinction and then when he came to university it's a first class pray and then the person you're looking up at him like this is on the ivory tower it's a first class pray it's a distinction uh, lady it's a distinction boy it's a distinction girl and then we ask a simple question that even the primary six uh, person will know. And then he's saying, um, 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 uh, let me think. I say, look at the person they said there uh, is a uh, first class brain. And we ask him question that primary six is uh, when a pupil could have answered. And he's saying, MM. Would you believe that it's actually first class brain? No. Now, when we call you overcomer, that you have overcome them. And you're of God. And then a little temptation comes. And then you're doing, eh, eh, shall I yield? Shall I not yield? Look at the person they call overcomer. Look at the person they call conqueror. Why is doing MM -M like this? Well, we'll not do MM. -M. We will overcome in Jesus' name. Ye of God, little children, and then overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the greater one is living in you and you have overcome already in jesus name number seven courage through christ courage through christ you'll be courageous you will not allow the unbelievers and the tempters and the temptresses to beat you down to knock you down to crush you down and he tells us in Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, in verse 9, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Almighty God said, I've commanded you. I'm standing behind you. I'm supporting you. I am upholding you. I'm watching over you. Have not I commanded you, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God will be with thee whithersoever thou goest. Every school you go, God will be with you. Every place you go, the Lord will give you favor. The Lord your God, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That's why you will be confident and those seven things I've given you will be the power of God in your life and you will overcome in Jesus' name. I told you that Joseph passed through three sessions 
And at the end of each session, he was tested. And I'm going through three points. And at the end of this point, you, I want to test you now to know whether you're writing it down. The power over temptation was number one. Tell me out loud. Compassion through Christ. You are doing well, you'll keep on doing well. Point number two there. Covenant with Christ. Great. Number three. Commitment to Christ. Number four. Communion with Christ. Number five. Companionship in Christ. Number six. Confidence in Christ. Number seven. Who says you are tall? Who says you are not sharp? Who says you are not victorious? Who says you are not first class distinction student? Clap for yourself, student. Praise the Lord. Angels are clapping for you. Believers are clapping for you. The church is clapping for you. Your parents are clapping for you. You will succeed in Jesus' name. Point number three, purity after transformation. When the Lord has transformed you, then he puts purity in your life. In Genesis chapter 39, Genesis chapter 39, we're reading verses 11 and 12. Genesis chapter 39, verse 11, verse 12. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he let his garment in her hand, and fled, and got him out. Everybody say, out. She he got out. It is better to, to lose your clothes than to lose your conversion. It is better to lose your garment than to lose your salvation. It is better to leave it in her hand than to give your heart away to him. And Joseph knew my salvation is greater. My holiness is greater. My purity is greater. Take that. You can hold on to that. I'm still keeping my soul. And I'm still keeping fellowship with God. And I'm still keeping my dream. Those are the people that overcome, and you will overcome. You will see that this young man had genuine salvation, because genuine salvation brings transformation, transformation of life. And eventually, as you move on after you are saved, there is sanctification, and that transforms your heart. And he led his garment and went out. You make up your mind, I've given my heart to Jesus. I've given my body to the Lord, and my body now is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and I will not allow anybody to mess up and defile that body. In Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. My son and my daughter, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us love privately, privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up and lie as the grave. And whole as those that go down into the beach, we shall find all precious substance. We shall feel our houses were spoiled. Cast in thy lot with us. Let us all have one pause. My son, my daughter too, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. Run away from them. Escape for your life. Don't allow them to have power, influence, or solitude over you. Proverbs chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 7. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. 
that's what rescued Joseph. That's what saved Joseph. He said no. And then he said, I said no before. And I'm still saying no. And then when he said no with the mouth, and the woman will not listen, then she said no with the action. And he left his clothes in her hand and ran out. That's how to demonstrate the no that you said before. If you just say it with the word of the mouth, and you don't say it with action, it will not be strong enough. That's why it says, remove thy way far from her. Come not nigh the door of her house. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man. When thou perceivest not in him the leaves of knowledge. When you see that a man or a woman, a boy or a girl or a teacher is trying to lure you into evil, all those uh, kinds of temptations were mentioned in point number one. You see that anyone is trying to lure you, is trying to arrest your heart, is trying to hold you, is trying to drag you, and is trying to pull you down into sin and evil. I see that this one doesn't have the, the grace of God. That's a foolish man. This one doesn't know God. That's a foolish man. This one doesn't honor God. That's a foolish man. This one doesn't think of the danger of living in sin. That's a foolish man. This man is not thinking of the future. Of the future punishment that will come on sinners. That's a foolish man. And when you see it's a foolish man, or a foolish woman, or a foolish boy or girl, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the leaves of knowledge. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 18. 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 18, flee fornication. That's the secret of victory. That's the secret of purity. That's exactly what Joseph did. He ran. He ran for his life. He ran so that he could keep his purity, holiness, and righteousness. He ran so that he could keep his dream alive. Because if you've been having the dream from God, the dream of prominence. The dream of preeminence. The dream of promotion. The dream of progress. The dream of prosperity. The dream of becoming a prince. When you've had that dream, and Satan wants to destroy the dream, here comes a dreamer. Let us kill him and kill his dream and see what will become of his dream. And when you know that agents of Satan want to pull you down, then you say no. And you keep on maintaining that no. And then if they now come close and they want to arrest you and pin you down to do the evil that will cancel your dream, that will remove the favor of God away from your life. Then you put your no into action and you flee. That's why it says there, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, outside the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What does that mean? He that committed fornication, commits fornication, will eventually have STD. Will have HIV. Will have AIDS. Not health. Not financial aid. Satanic AIDS. And it will destroy your body. 
That's why it says, flee. Verse 19, watch. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 12, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. You will not be so, but confident, and think that everything is all right. You can manage. No, you cannot manage. Flee. Run away. When you perceive this is a messenger of the devil. And this messenger of the devil is trying to lure you, to drive you, to draw you into sin. Flee. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. That's why the Lord is saying, flee. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. In Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22, flee also youthful lusts. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. We're going to have the victory. I said we will have the victory. And remember, when you pass the test of purity, then you will have the test of promotion. You pass the test of purity, then you possess the taste of promotion. And that promotion has come. How many of you will grab it? Why don't you rise up? You'll be successful. God's eye of favor is upon you. And the Lord will give you all the grace you need, all the strength you need. You will overcome. You must overcome. You are an overcomer. Live to your name. Live to your title. We are the victorious youths of this generation. Let us live as if we're victorious. Let us live as if we are conquerors. And we are. We are more than conquerors. So the Lord Jesus Christ who has loved us. You will conquer. Open your mouth and say, Lord, give me grace. Give me strength. Help me so that I will not yield to temptation. Why should I? I am a conqueror. Yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. Every victory will help you some other to win. Fight manfully onward. That passion subdue you. Look ever to Jesus and he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you. To comfort, to strengthen and to keep you. He is willing to aid you, to help you. He will carry you through. Shun evil companions, bad language, disdain. God's name, hold in reference, not take it in vain. Be thoughtful and honest, kind-hearted and true. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. As the Savior to help you, to comfort, to strengthen, to keep you. He is willing to aid you, he will carry you through. To him that overcometh, God giveth a crown. Through faith, we will conquer, though often cast down. He who is our Savior, our strength will renew you. Look ever to Jesus, He will carry you through as a Savior to help you, to comfort you, to strengthen you, to keep you. He is willing to help you. He will carry you through.